back. This is his back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about half of Russell Abar, man? Russell Abar. Yeah. So what do you think, folks? Uh, 10, 15 pounds of Mexican food, sweater, leather jacket, hot lights, good call? <laughs> the first minute on stage. <laughs> Relax. It's amazing. Last show I did, you're not going to believe this, it's true. Belfast, Ireland, last week. Never been to Belfast, Ireland. Played to 900 screaming and adoring fans in a turn-of-the-century theater that Oscar Wilde performed on. Only to come back to America, the country I have toured ceaselessly for 15 years <laughs> to play Adolph's Comedy Bunker in Idaho. <laughs> in front of 25 apathetic people, strangers one and all, who stared at me like a dog that had just been shown a card trick. <laughs> Little ironies. <laughs> Quick impression, Keith Richards. <laughs> Fast and furious. Keep up with me. <laughs> easier now that I It is great to be here, man. I'm uh, living out in uh, LA now, which I refer to as Hell because it is the worst place on the planet, and the sooner it falls into the ocean due to a major earthquake, the better this world will be. Thank you. Welcome to the comedy of pure hatred. Join me. Please join me. Nightmare of fucking city. Turd of a city needs to be flushed away into the Pacific Bowl, and oh, how I shall grin from ear to fucking ear. Tanning booth coffins and Charlton Heston's toupee are all that's left floating in Arizona Bay. It's over! Thank you, God. That's why I love being here. You know, I love getting here, you know, for the weather. They don't have... Every day it's hot and sunny in L.A. Every fucking day it's the same. Hot and sunny. Every day. Every day. Never gonna change, never change, never change. Hot and sunny. And they love that. Isn't it great? Hot and sunny every day. Every day, hot and sunny. Isn't it great? What are you, a fucking lizard? <laughs> Only reptiles feel that way about this kind of weather. I'm a mammal. I can afford scarves, coats, cappuccino, and rosy cheeked women, and all are available for sale on the streets of New York, where I was so Urban megalopolis, where the comedy of hate will thrive. <laughs> L.A. is a nightmare. You always meet this one smug guy in L.A., this guy, you know this guy? Hey, I love calling back east January 1st. Call it back east January 1st. What are y'all doing? Snowed in, huh? <laughs> a bummer. Me? I'm out by the pool! <laughs> What a dick, this guy is. <laughs> I used to love calling L.A. when I lived in New York. What are y'all doing? Talking to TV producers. Bummer. Me? I'm reading a book. <laughs> yeah, we're thinking back east. <laughs> yeah, we're evolving. <laughs> is that the big one I hear in the background? <laughs> Bye, you lizard fucks. Bye! go silent on the cellular <laughs> and the birds begin to tweet. <laughs> Who would miss it? If L.A. fell in the ocean right now, would you give a fuck? <laughs> Gives a fuck. Oaky fucking Oz. That's all it is. The Oaky Oz. L.A. <laughs> so cool! <laughs> Oaky. Ha <laughs> ha! I did the rap. I love their little propaganda they have for themselves. We've all seen it. Ha ha! Los Angeles. City of streets are paved with gold.
golden dreams. No, those are needles and fetuses. What are you talking about? Ha ha! Emily. Look at all the young stars rehearsing their lines on Santa Monica Boulevard. Those are male prostitutes. What the fuck are you talking about? Ha ha! Hell, Los Angeles. Look at the young starlets on Hollywood and Vine, waiting for their big break in the motion picture industry. Those are transvestite hookers. You can't fucking fool me. Ha ha! Welcome to hell fucking A. of the pedestrian right-of-way law. You know what this law is? True law. This is absolutely true. Ready for this? Pedestrian right-of-way law. If a pedestrian decides to cross the road anywhere or at any time, just arbitrarily, I want to be on here, over here now, steps in road, every car by law has to stop and let this botched turtle of a fucking reptile human meander across the fucking six-lane avenues. Stupid fucking one. <laughs> How many of y'all wondered like I did during the LA riots when those people were being pulled out of their trucks and beaten half to death? How many of y'all wondered like I did? Step on the fucking gas! <laughs> Stepped out into the street, Molotov cocktails, clubs in hand, every one of these California idiots. <laughs> Freeze frame. Dun, 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 I guarantee you that Reginald Denny, that truck driver, never gonna stop again as long as... <laughs> Could be an old woman with a baby carriage crossing the road. It's just, uh, uh, not today, baby. Not today. I tried stopping once. Perhaps you saw me on the news. Didn't work out too well for old Richard. I'll take the $25 ticket over the 2,500 stitches I had in my left fucking cheek. Imagine being that guy, man. The whole world saw that guy get his ass kicked repeatedly on the news. Over and over, they ran that guy getting his ass kicked in every country in this world, and in every country, the same question was asked. Why don't you step on the fucking guy? The France won the guest, the Petro. Step on the Petro. You will be through the people on foot. You are in a giant Macron player of tennis shoes. Surely you understand the physics of a large truck going through a tennis shoe. China, why you not step on Petro? Step on Petro! No, you have no problem. Step up. Step, step, patrol. Oh, Reginald, trying to obey the law. I bet that Reginald Denny's an exemplary employee at that trucking service now. His boss is thrilled to have him. You know? Shit, Reginald's here again. I'm ahead of schedule. <laughs> ahead of schedule every run, man. Looks as though he ain't stopping out there. I love to give him a raise, but every time I run up to the cab, he starts backing off. <laughs> Reginald seems rather skittish these days. Shut <laughs> over in England, you know, UK. I was over now, I went over to the UK, it's unbelievable timing. I went over to the UK the day the LA riots occurred. I left LA. 
unbelievable timing. I left LA. <laughs> Bye, Bill and Julian. And I will. Y'all yeah. have fun while I'm gone. You will, Bill. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> land. Damn. I land at Heathrow Airport. Eleven hours later, pass a newspaper stand. LA burns to ground. <laughs> Cigarette lit. Someone turn the intro. You know? And all my friends over there in Britain trying to sympathize with me. Oh, Bill, crime is horrible. Bill, if it's any consolation, crime is horrible here, too. This is Hobbiton, and I'm Bilbo Hicks. You live in a land of fairies and elves compared to us. Don't you ever compare your fucking crime to America's crime. <laughs> you gotta see British crime. It's fucking hilarious, man. The front page of the paper I read one day. Yesterday, some hooligans knocked over a dustbin in Shaftesbury. <laughs> The hooligans are loose. What if they become ruffians? <laughs> Would hate to be a dustbin in Shaftesbury tonight. No one knows what it's like to be a dustbin in Shaftesbury. Are real pale guys with penny loafers and no socks. We are the hoot again. Oh, come here. Nope, got to catch us. You corner me, I might become a scallywag. Let me just say, what is that? Hooligan, ruffian, scallywag? Speak English. Blood. I'd love to put the hooligans up against the bloods in L.A. That would be a real short gang, gang war, wouldn't it? We are the hooligans. <laughs> huh? Hula something. I didn't catch it all. Motherfucker skipped up to me and patted me on the head. I don't know what he's saying. He's a dead motherfucker now. Cool or something. I didn't hear all of it. A pale motherfucker. Look at that thing, man. You seen me bunch so motherfucking pale? Look at the teeth on that thing. Crap. Cool or something. I don't know. <coughs> Probably led by Nancy Well. <laughs> So I watched the, uh, the riots. You know, I was over there in the UK and I saw a special on the Rodney King trial. And I think watching that, because I, I never saw the trial while I was here. I saw the trial over there. I think I figured out how the riots occurred. You see these cops testifying? Do these guys have balls or what, man? These guys carry their balls in a wheelbarrow, man. Excuse me, excuse me. Big Balls is here to testify. <laughs> Place your right testicle on the back. Oh. <laughs> this guy, Officer Coon. <laughs> is it me or is life real weird right now? Isn't it a little weird? Does it feel a little shaky when you walk? Officer Coon looks in the camera and actually goes, Oh, the Rodney King beating tape? It's all in how you look at it. <laughs> Courtroom murmurs, Jesus, what balls! <laughs> I have never seen balls of this magnitude. He, he must have a specially fitted uniform in which to place his large testicles, because there's just no way. Normal, normal pants would contain such huge jewels. <laughs> So and how you look at it, Officer Coon. The host. Would you care to tell the court how you look at that? Well, yeah. Okay. 
you all right, see it's how you look at the tape. For instance, uh, well, uh, well, if you play it backwards, you see us help King up and send him on his way. <laughs> Guilty. Excuse me, excuse me. Man with big balls has just been acquitted. I'm off to a victory card. And then you watch all the news reports. Today, Officer Coon, Officer Nigger Hater, and Officer Keep Darky Down are acquitted on all racist charges. Here's Tom with the weather. Hi, Susie. It's 480 degrees Fahrenheit here in South Central LA right now. Probably a good weekend to get out of town. There's Gus the Lent coming down La Brea. <laughs> then Bush comes out, says not to worry. The justice system's not done with those cops yet. Bush is going to call together a special committee made up of the surviving members of the Warren Commission to review all the evidence. <laughs> Probably come up with the magic baton theory. <laughs> One baton blow just went out of hand. stick might hit my big balls. <laughs> yeah, the warning commission. <sighs> I love talking about the Kennedy assassination. I really do. You know why? Because I think it's a great archetype example of how the totalitarian government which rules this world via the airwaves can partition off information in such a way that we, the masses, base all our decisions on erroneous... Oh, I'm sorry, wrong meeting. <laughs> it's the meeting tomorrow at the docks. I was just in Dallas, Texas, man. You know, you can actually go to the sixth floor of the school book depository. It's a museum called the Assassination Museum. I believe named that after the assassination. I'm not sure the exact <laughs> form it's, it's really wild to go up there. And they have the window set up to look exactly like it did on that day. And it's really accurate, you know, because Oswald's not in it. <laughs> Research, but I mean painstaking detail. <laughs> it's true, man. It's glassed in. It's called the sniper's nest. It's got the boxes sitting there, and you can't actually get to the window. And the reason they did that, of course, they didn't want thousands of American tourists getting to that window each year. You know, going, no fucking way! I can't even see the road! <laughs> There's no fucking way, man, not unless Oswald was hanging by his toes upside down from the ledge. Surely someone would have seen this. Either that or some pigeons grabbed onto him and flew him over the motorcade. You know, there was rumors of anti-Castro pigeons seen drinking in bars the night before the assassination. Someone overheard them saying, coo, coo. Assassination pun. <laughs> Terrible angle. All that led up to a fucking pun. Isn't that right? This whole show might end up with a rabbit coming out of my butt. Who knows? Because it's the Christmas season. You gotta please the kids. Assassinations for Talisman Goodman, Orwellian, a, a bunny rabbit! <laughs> Bill can do it all. I love the totalitarian government theory. I love when the coin came out of Earl's nostril. <laughs> I am here to please. <coughs> People are so funny.
funny though about Kennedy. It's so wild the attitudes we have. People actually come up to me, Bill, quit talking about Kennedy, man. Let it go. It's a long time ago. You want to just forget about it? I'm like, okay, you know, then don't bring up Jesus to me. <laughs> talking shelf life here. <laughs> Bill, you know, Jesus died for you. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Let it go. Forget about it. How about this? Get Pilate to release the fucking files. Quit washing your hands, Pilate, and release those files. I want to see who else was on that grassy Golgotha that day. <laughs> Oh yeah, the three Roman peasants with the hundred dollar sandals. Yeah, right! <laughs> well, there were three hobos we picked up who had on dock markers. <laughs> hobo. I like E. Howard Hunt, but it's a hobo similarity that's phenomenally unbelievable. <laughs> So I was over in England, and this time, every time I go over there, something weird happens, man. This time, bus losers! <laughs> Ding dong, bush is dead, bush is dead, bush is dead, oh, bush is dead, bush, bush, bush is dead. And everyone, ding dong, bush is dead, bush is dead. Twelve years, that Republican rampaging beast fucking elephant. <laughs> Legitimize greed, racism, criminal activities, overthrowing other countries' governments. Finally, that fucking beast brought to its goddamn knees. Yes, yes, yes! Thank you, God. 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 I feel like me and all my friends were a little tribe of pygmy comics, man, shooting darts into that fucking beast for 12 years. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Bill, how do you feel? Well... People ask me, it's not that I disagree with Bush's economic policies or his foreign policies, all right? It's that I believe he's a child of Satan. <laughs> here to destroy the planet Earth. Yes, 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 I'm over here, you know. That's where I am. I'm this away. You know. And what bugged me so much about the level of sadness, how fucking, you know, apathetic and docile we are now as a fucking is that it made the whole election about money, and everyone seemed to find that as normal as could be. You know what I mean? It's all about money. Your wallet. Bill, you vote for Clinton. Taxes going up. I'm warning you right now. He may say he's not right. Taxes going up. Well, I have news for you, folks. There's other reasons not to vote for Bush than taxes, okay? The reason I didn't vote for him, you ready? Is that Bush, along with Ronald Reagan, presided over an administration who for 12 years their policy towards Central America included genocide. Now, see, the reason I didn't vote for him is because he's a mass murderer. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. See, there's other reasons to vote than your fucking wallet. See, I weighed taxes, mass murder. <laughs> I thought, you know what? I can pay an extra nickel on gas a gallon just knowing little brown kids aren't being clubbed to death like baby seals so Pepsi can put a plant in Nicaragua. Yeah, yeah. There's other reasons to vote than your own fucking selfish, fat fucking needs. Okay? Okay. All right, that's all I said. You know, then they talk about, you know what I'm getting real sick of is I'm talking about the deficit. Oh, we got to tighten our belts to pay that deficit. You know, we, your government, misspent you, your hard-earned tax money, so you're going to have to tighten your belt. You know what would make it a lot easier to tighten my fucking belt? Is we tighten it around one of those cocksuckers' neck every week on TV. I would eat bologna for a week if I could see Jesse Helms' cracker ass hanging by his fucking colostomy bag for You know, this bologna ain't that bad. I like bologna. Fuckers, burn them, kill them. I guarantee any raise that went on in their part, dude, it, it took part as their own security. 
one day everyone's gonna realize these fuckers, you know. Forget it. Wrong meeting. All right. <laughs> See you at the dock. See you under the bridge. Saturday. All the trolls and fucking bent souls will meet down there. Bill, you know, my grandmother used to sleep with Oswald. Talk to me! Tell me more! Bill, Oswald was blind in both eyes. You're kidding me! No! I knew they were hiding that. <laughs> the twisted cynics. Boy, politics makes for strange bedfellows, that is for sure, man. Two days after the election, I read a quote from Saddam Hussein. It took two days to get a quote from him. They had to wait for him to quit gut laughing at some bunker in Baghdad. Saddam <laughs> Hussein. <laughs> I read this quote from Hussein and goes, hey, nothing against America. We just want to see George Bush beheaded in his head, kicked down the road like a soccer ball. And I was thinking, weird. That's what I wanted to say. Wow, me and Hussein, we're like this. Who would have thunk it? I'll tell you another good thing that Bush is gone that ends 12 years of fundamentalist Christians in the White House. Thank you, God. Finally, my prayers got through. I was on hold for 12 fucking years. Apparently, someone else had precedent over my prayer. Fundamentalist Christians who believe the Bible is the exact word of God, including that wacky fire and brimstone revelations ending, have had their finger on the button for 12 fucking years. <laughs> Tell me when, Lord. Tell me when. <laughs> Tell me when to be your trusted servant. <laughs> wow. Did you know that, this is unbelievable, did you know that fundamentalist Christians believe the world is 12,000 years old? I swear to God, and I asked this uh, one fundamentalist Christian guy telling me this, I go, why do you think the world's 12,000 years old? He goes, well, that's <laughs> how they all sound. Right? In my little world, they all sound like fucking crackers, don't they? Every character I do, it doesn't matter. Everyone I tell, yeah, well, oh. Because <laughs> I am Mr. Smartman, Smarty Pants. I am Smarty Pants. I circle the globe looking for rubes. <laughs> Take back their little fucking pearls. Pearls from swine, that's what I get. Anyway, this guy goes, well, the world's 12,000 years old. The way we figured that out is we got all the people from Adam and Eve. We've been born from Adam and Eve, it's all in the Bible, and we added up their ages, 12,000 years. I said, well, I had no idea you'd been so fucking thorough and scientific about it. Wow, you got it. Can I ask you one question now? Sure. 12,000 years old the world is, right, and it's all mentioned in the Bible. Okay, one word question, let me ask you, are you ready? Uh -huh. Dinosaur. <laughs> you think someone would have brought that up in the fucking Bible, that's all I'm saying. Walking on water, changing water into wine, cool, yes, two-story lizard, that's going in there right along with it. Sorry. Brought this up. And Jesus and the disciples walked down the trail towards Nazareth. But oh, the trail was blocked by a giant brontosaurus with a splinter in his paw. And oh, the disciples did run a shriek and what a big fucking lizard lord. I'm never gonna forget this. I'm gonna mention it in my book, said Luke. You know what? I'm gonna mention it in my book too, said Matthew. I'm not sure what I saw, said Thomas. <laughs> Thomas, that was a big fucking lizard. Now quit down there. Let us run and start writing our stories. But our hero, Jesus, was unafraid, and he took the splinter from the brontosaurus paw, and the brontosaurus became his friend. And Jesus sent him to Scotland, where he lived in a lock, oh, so many years, attracting fat American families with their fat fucking dollars to come look for it. Oh, the Scots did praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, 
know what I mean? So I asked this guy, I said, come on, Dave, let, answer me one question. You know, dinosaur fossils. He goes, God put those here to test our faith. So I think God put you here to test my faith. Spin, I'm getting on that ball. Does that bother anyone here, the idea that God be fucking with our heads. Does that trouble anyone besides me that God's running around burying fucking skulls? <laughs> we'll see who believes in me now. <laughs> I'm a prankster God. I am killing me. <laughs> or soon will be when I sit my little son down there. Well, you die, you go to heaven, St. Peter at the gate. Did you believe in dinosaurs? <laughs> yeah, there's fossils everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot, God was fucking with you. Two-story dinosaurs. What are you, a moron? God's joking with you. Seems so plausible. Ah! <laughs> that was a good fall, wasn't it? God damn, that was good. I've never done that. I pulled some kind of muscle right here, though. <laughs> The what? The coccyx bone? Help me! Oh, I'm perfect for the under the bridge meeting now. Man, did you know there was 18 Oswalds actually? Really? Yes, come on over! <laughs> you ever notice how people who believe in creationism look really unevolved. <laughs> Eyes real close together, big furry hands and feet. I believe God created me in one day. <laughs> Looks like he rushed it. It's <laughs> another good thing about Bush being gone, perhaps. He, uh, go for about a year, maybe, without seeing a fucking fetus on TV. There was one of those little fetuses this year, had more TV time than I got last year. Someone's gonna sign that little fetus. He's gonna get an agent. You're gonna be big someday, kid. You're gonna be huge. I'm gonna have you swimming in pools of formaldehyde, not just little jars. I'm gonna put you in a sitcom with Roseanne. I see you as the wacky next door neighbor fetus. That's the way I read it. <laughs> Can you trip over a couch, kid? Try it! <laughs> fetus is on TV every fucking channel. I get a couple of spots a year. What the fuck? <laughs> Who's this fetus's manager? Boy, abortion. I thought that, that was going to divide the country. Last call. Baby, we're here all night. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, you're not. Shut up. We're doing last call, and you'll be out of here in 15 minutes, Mr. Dark Lord. <laughs> Snapped at the help. <laughs> oh, abortion. Unbelievably divisive issue. Even amongst my friends, who are all highly intelligent, totally divided on abortion. Some of my friends, for instance, think these pro-life people are annoying idiots. Other, my friends, think these pro-life people are evil fucks. <laughs> How are we going to come to a consensus? I mean, I'm torn, you know? I try to take the broad view and think of them as evil, annoying, idiot fucks. But again, I'm a diplomat. Leave rising the scales. <laughs> You know what I mean? This is such a holiday Christmas show, isn't it? Gee, Bill. Let's talk about mass murder and wrap it up and go home and open gifts. You're such a little ray of sunshine, Willie. You're going to be here all week because I want to bring Granny over when she comes into town on the Kerrville line. I want to get her away from that quilt she's been melting in for 20 years and take her to see your show, Willie. 
Greg Allen, the Grammys. So, I quit smoking. Well, thanks for that wonderful support. Thank you. Thank you. Judas Trader! The last audience was yelling, Judas Trader! It's not like Dylan going electric, all right? I just. <laughs> I'm not reformed. Smoke, drink, do drugs, do all of it. I don't fucking care. I'm not a goddamn reformed person. I mean, these cigarettes still look good to me, you know. It's early on, and they look great. Every one of them looks like it was made by God, and rolled by Jesus, and moistened shut with Claudia Schiffer's pussy right now. <laughs> That looks tasty. It is. It's hard to quit. I was walking through Central Park and I saw an old man smoking. Nothing makes a smoker happier than to see an old person smoke. You know, this guy was ancient, man. Bent over a walker, puffing away. Dude, you're my hero. your age smoking, man. You're an inspiration. <laughs> goes, what? I'm 28. <laughs> well, you can imagine how uh, tolerant they are in L.A. of smoking. Yeah. I uh, was driving around once in L.A. smoking a cigarette and windows rolled up, thinking I'm pretty safe in my fucking car. <laughs> I hear this honking next to me. Lady, I have no idea who she is. Honking at me, and I look over and she goes. <laughs> she runs right into a pole. <laughs> Flame, sky high. I see her cross the road doing the gratuitous walk of fire. <laughs> right then, Reginald Denny was coming down the road. Uh... Sky high like a reverse shooting star. <laughs> all I could think of was look at all the secondary smoke coming off her scalp. <laughs> She's headed right for the ozone. Stop it! <laughs> That's what I don't get flying around, you know. They don't allow smoking on airplanes, right? But they allow children. <laughs> a little fairness, perhaps, eh? I'm a smoker, so, I'm, you know, I'm trying to quit flying. And, uh... <laughs> Boy, it was when I wrote that joke. You know, uh, not Bill. Uh, it's the right verb tense. <laughs> Do that much for us. <laughs> Get this, man. I flew in today, though. Get this, like, I flew in from Florida. Four hours flight. Get on the plane, luck out, every seat next to me empty. Cool, I'm going to sleep, no shame. Every arm in goes up. <laughs> pillows, blankets on the head. I'm out of here. Which I love doing because it really bugs those business guys sitting around. You know, I actually had one guy say to me once, Say hello. <laughs> no, I bought every seat. Shut up. <laughs> Taking six thousand dollar naps, you idiot. Go back to your Macintosh, monkey boy. Just because you're in the sky, don't mean you can't work for the man. Hey, I think I hear your jacket wrinkling in the overhead compartment. I'm asleep on this plane, right? and I feel this tapping on my head, and I look up, and there's this little kid. 
Loops! He's loops on the fucking plane. It's his playground in the sky. And of all the things he could get into, the top of my fucking head poses the biggest challenge. And the most fascination. And he is repetitively tapping me on the plane. And I look across the aisle at his mom, and she's just smiling, you know. This guy next to the mom, they're so cute when they're that small. This little kid just running loose, man. And he did it. The kid runs over the emergency exit and he starts flipping that handle to the door. And the guy next to the mom starts to get up. And I go, man. We're about to learn an important lesson right now. You're right, the smaller he gets, the cuter he is. Come <laughs> on, oh, what a little cutie, look at him! Wish I had a camera right now with a telescopic lens. I'd love to get a picture of his little face when his pudgy little legs hit that farmhouse down there. Well, stewardess, since we got a breeze in here, can we smoke now? is fairly well circulated. <laughs> no smoking. Tell that lady in the back to quit. She just flew in the door from down there. <laughs> oh, Willie was trying to make a little bow tie on that one. Didn't work. Caught his finger. Ah, paper burn. Blood shooting everywhere. Started off with great thought. Ended up terrible tragedy. <laughs> Best laid plans of mice and Willie. <laughs> in time to find him. Jakku, he must be stopped. There is much you can learn from peace. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. What else, man? I forgot my whole list. Yeah, we're trying to record a little something here tonight. Part of the company album and part of something else, but anyway. So we'll edit this. <laughs> Even I, failing biology, understand the implications of tossing air. Now, uh -huh. room service, could you send some milk up here, please? I think I just came on my bodily fluids. Help me. It's a first. Help me. I'm a shadow of my former shell. Shadow of my former shell. Some of these look great on paper. <laughs> so what else? Oh, by the way, if anyone here is in marketing or advertising, kill yourself. <laughs> no joke there, I'm just planting seeds. Don't think we're Seriously, kill yourself. Now, no, seriously, there's no rationalization for what you do. You're Satan's little humper. Okay, back to the show. Anyway. Anyway. You know what bugs me about doing stuff like that is I know that every marketing person here is going, yeah, Bill's trying to get that anti-marketing dollar. That's a huge market. Everything is a fucking market. Quit putting a dollar bill sign on every fucking thing in the world. Ooh, the righteous indignation dollar. Huge market. Very smart of Bill. He's done his research. Down and I'm caught in the marketing web. Ooh, the I'm trapped dollar. Huge in times of recession. Very big market. Bill's relating to these people well. Very smart of Bill. Evil concept. I like pole. I'm sick of the pole. Cut the fucking poles out. Just quit it. It's old. It's tired. It ain't funny. Let it go. Poles. You know, first of all, they get the answers they want by how they ask the questions. You know what I mean? Like during the Persian Gulf War, you hear stuff like, do you think George Bush, a good Christian white man, <laughs> should send troops to Iraq to stem the brown Islamic tide from coming over here and fucking your daughter? <laughs> I'm for this war. <laughs> Never 
had it worded so concisely, the exact implications. But marketing is the most evil kind. You know what they do to movies now? Do y'all know they do this to movies? They show movies to test audiences before the movie is released and then change the movie. Depending on how these 200 random Yahoo's. <laughs> By the way, let's underline, highlight, exclamation point, point fingers at the word Yahoo. I think it's applicable. They changed the movie depending on what these fuckers thought about it. As though we're all the same, as though we share the same taste, as though you can tell from me what entertainment. As, as though, as though, as though. For instance, saw a movie called Basic Instant. Now, Bill's quick capsule review. Piece of shit. Now. <laughs> See how it gets right to the point, too. None of this phony fucking hysteria or propaganda around that film. Everyone got caught up in it. Well, is it too sexist? And what about the lesbian? Did have the... Piece of shit. <laughs> That's all it is. That's where your confusion stems from. You're trying to find meaning where zero exists. You just watched a piece of shit. Say that and walk away, and you'll be better man tomorrow for it. I just saw a piece of shit. Was it too... You've forgotten how to perceive correctly. What's your gut instinct tell you? Piece of shit. Well, then go with that, because that's what it was. Piece of shit. Anyway, find out after seeing this film about six times. <laughs> find out that all the lesbian sex scenes, let me repeat this part of the show. All of the lesbian sex scenes were cut out of that film because the test audience was turned off by them. <laughs> Boy, is my thumb not on the pulse of America. <laughs> seem like Randy Pan the Goat Boy. <laughs> that was the only reason I went to that piece of shit film. <laughs> I guarantee you, if I had been in that test audience, the only one out front protest in that film would have been Michael Douglas demanding his part be put back in. <laughs> I swear I was in that movie. I swear I was. Gee, Mike, the movie started, Sharon Stone was eating another woman for about an hour and a half in the credits roll. I, uh, I remember seeing your scrawny ass. Was that you when she flipped the other girl over and started eating her butt? Sitting in the corner? Was that you sitting in the corner? Oh, yeah, you were real good. Yeah, all right, Michael Doug, all right. What I'm saying is it'd be a different movie if I were the test audience. I'm saying, yeah. I think a little bit more entertaining? Yeah. Smidgen, smidgen. Sharon Stone eating another girl butthole smidgen more entertaining than what you saw. And I mean, not just that little light thing on the cheek. I'm talking the tart brown eye intrusion. A little more entertaining, maybe? Smidgen? Yeah. A good date movie, too, isn't it? Break the eye. Oh, it'd really break the fucking eyes, wouldn't it? Sharon Stone, uh, Yeah, baby, I like this film. And you? I like it, too. We're gonna get along just fine. If that butt licking don't bother you, fuck it, man. I'm not letting y'all in on more than you care to know about. There's some of you pulling back. Is the birth of Christ three days from now? Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Be a preemie. Be a preemie. Uh, horrible. All it was meant to do, and what you did do, is titillate an increasingly docile and neutered populace, which is what we have become. Just like the Madonna sex book did. You know, Madonna sex book. Unbelievable. Farce, 50 bucks. For 50 bucks, you can actually have sex, goddammit. <laughs> Twice in Kerrville. <laughs> no, no, the reason I know this. <laughs> I had a 
layover on my way to Adolph's Comedy Bunker in Idaho at the Kerrville Union Station. But, uh, what do people say about that film? It's great. Why? <laughs> Get to see Sharon Stone's pussy? Ooh, the hallmark of art. <laughs> Yeah, you get to see your pussy for one-eighth of a second. Don't blink, you might miss the story. <laughs> it's not bad, that's 40 minutes into you, going, what a piece of shit. And she goes... <laughs> <laughs> she didn't see her pussy. <laughs> oh, I was reaching for my popcorn. <laughs> Dude, you missed it! <laughs> this could be the greatest film of all time. You gotta stay on my shit again and again and again. God, hey, you telling me this actually caused an uproar in our 20th century fucking world? Maybe y'all don't know this. Did you know there's movies you can rent? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but pussy? Did you know? <laughs> One eighth of a second of plot, the rest of the film, pussy. The numbers are exactly reversed. <laughs> One line of dialogue. I'd like to see your pussy. <laughs> and no quick cuts, either long, drawn out, close up. <laughs> Boy's personal favorite. The peach under pear imagery, which Picasso used so well during the blue ball period. Come here, my little food basket. Go, oh, boy, you're nasty. Shaggy old thing. You smell weird, dude. You smell like an old boot filled with strawberries. Why are you here? I am here to please you. Yeah. Oh. Well. You could tie me to your headboard. Throw your legs over my shoulders and let Goat Boy wear you like a feed bag. <laughs>
I know I'm in a case of some kind of arrested development. I know <laughs> no, you know how I know that? Because I was sitting there thinking the other day, I was going to rent some stuff in the video store near my house, so I was sitting there thinking, God, if people could see what the hell I've rented the last year, <laughs> fairly strong evidence of arrested development. <laughs> Porno movies and video games. <laughs> what am I, like 13 years old emotionally right now? You know what I mean? Clam Lappers and Sonic Hedgehog. That was one weekend. That was Christmas. That, that, that was uh, uh, Easter weekend. That is how I celebrated the death and resurrection of our Lord. Clam Lappers and Sonic Hedgehog. I'm not proud of my life. Other people are putting on their bow ties and Sunday best, and I'm sitting there in the unholy blue light of my TV. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they could combine the two in, in video games and porno films. I'd have high score on Clam Lappers by now. My initials in there. I do have this big fear I'm going to go rent a porno film one day at my little local store, you know? And I'm going to go rent it, take it up to the front, the guys are going to do a little doot, little market thing, and then just suddenly. <laughs> just rented your millionth porno film. It's okay, I don't want to do it. Weed, 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 Get a picture of it. Weed. What was it? Anal entry volume 500. He went through them all, everybody. Weed, weed, weed. Not that proud at this moment, please. Don't. <laughs> Later. Music? Music? Music from what, boy? Have you heard any good music? Well, heard any good music? I don't know, man. I gave up on fucking music when the musicians quit fucking playing it. Oh, no, I need to get laid. Listen, let's get back to it. Trying to get me off that goat boy thing. Fuck you, goat boy is here to stay. <laughs> Let me tell you more of Good Boy's little fascinating theories. <laughs> Good Boy, your beard. What's that around your mouth? <laughs> Love flakes. It's hard to have a relationship in this business. You know, I'm not complaining, but it's just difficult. You're always traveling, keeping weird hours. You know, it's going to take a very special one. You know? Or a bunch of average ones. <laughs> My point is that. But I, I, I do hold you women responsible for two things, and that is A, one, the success of Michael Bolton, and B, two, the success of achy, breaky, billy, fucking moron, mongoloid, idiot, no talent, hack, piece of shit, arrogant, pompous, soon to be has been, Billy Ray, fucking inbred Cyrus. <laughs> Hold you responsible for every moment he celebrates even a whiff of fucking success. Oh yeah, let's all be oh Bill, not us. Bill, we're not the ones who bought his five billion albums. And Michael Bolton, this un incredibly inexplicable success. Inexplicable, there's no explanation. None, zero, none. Can anyone but me hear how phony this fucker is? Am I the only one? Can you hear that? It's, he's a phony. Do, do I, the only one who has a special Dumbo ear who hears this fucker? He's a phony. Here, put on the Dumbo ear. He's a phony, no talent. Come on. Put the dumbbell here. Say, we don't bring you holy holy. The microphone's getting lower and lower. I know this is the feeling I always get. But uh, here's a weird story. Now, get this, man. This is a few years ago, but it still holds a great deal of fascination to me. 
Ted Bundy on trial in Florida. You know, Theodore Bundy, the happy-go-lucky Theodore. <laughs> on trial in Florida, and I read an article in the paper that says the courtroom was filled with women trying to meet Ted Bundy and give him love letters and wedding proposals. Now, I'm sorry to say the first thing that crossed my mind upon reading this article was, and I'm not getting laid. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Read another article. A woman is suing the state of Wisconsin. Why would anyone sue the state of Wisconsin? Well, she married a fella on death row. Why is this fella on death row? Well, killed eight women. <laughs> she married him. He has AIDS. Let's up the story's ante, shall we? Let's up the ante of the story. Mass murder, death row, AIDS. She married him and suing the state of Wisconsin for conjugal visiting rights. She wants to fuck this guy. <laughs> I'm sorry to say the first thing that crossed my mind upon reading that was, and I'm not getting late. <laughs> can make a fella confused after a while. It occurred to me, Satan is going to have no problems on this planet because all the women in the world are going to go, What a cute butt! <laughs> Satan, you don't know him like I do. <laughs> He's the Prince of Darkness. I can change it. <laughs> and I bet you can. I don't give Satan a snowball's chance in hell with the ego of a woman. He'll rule the earth for a week, and then next week we'll out see him cutting the lawn. <laughs> hey, aren't you Satan? Shut up. <laughs> hey, Mr. Dark Lord, you left something in a hedge back there. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> see him at the supermarket buying tampons, man. <laughs> hey, aren't you Satan? Shut up. Tampon project. Shut up. I am the Dark Lord. <laughs> oh, you're so scary. You dropped your tampons. Your pussy whip, Satan! Your pussy whip! Shut up! That's what I think would happen. But I am a bitter man, dressed in black, filled with hate, and spouting out of every fucking orifice I got. There's that much hate in that little time. Oh. The microphone's getting lower and lower and lower. They just, it's the biggest, subtlest hint. Bill, you're off, you're gone. Thanks for dropping in. And crossing oceans of time to find you. Check me. Check. I am Bobby Fisher. I will play you all. Check. introduces everyone in the band, the singers, da, 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 da. and at the end of all this, he goes, and the man who brings me my scars and my water, Mr. Charlie Hodge. <laughs> who is this tick <laughs> sucking on Elvis's behind, giving Elvis scars and water, probably taking care of the rest of his fucking life, too. Charlie Hodge, man who brings me my scars and my water, Charlie Hodge, ladies and gentlemen. Charlie's been with me a long time, you know, and uh, we used to have two people, one who brought me scarves and one who brought me water. <laughs> one day Charlie was up late and he come knocking on my room. He said, E, I had an idea. And I said, Charlie, come on in. He said, E, you know we got Earl and Dwayne. 
one of them bringing you scars and one water and switching off each night so they don't get bored and crash into the wall. I said, yeah, Charlie, what's your point? Earl and Dwayne are doing a pretty good job. And they said, yeah, but they're eating like two different people. And I said, true, Charlie, what do you got in mind? He said, well, Lee, been working on some blueprints out in the bus. I said, what are they, Charlie? He said, well, Lee, what if I were to bring you both your scarves and your water at one time? I said, Charlie, can't be done. And goddamn, if three weeks later, he didn't walk on stage bringing me both scarves and water. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Hodge. Brandon brings me my scarves and my water. Charlie Hodge. My brow gets sweaty, my throat gets parched. Mr. Charlie Hodge brings me out some scarves and water. Beautiful man. Funny man, too. Great to tour with. Watch this. Want to see something funny? Oh, yeah, we do, Bill. Okay, watch this. <laughs> yeah, Bill, uh, look around you. Look at the name of any, you know, literature you see on the front table. Oh, all right. <laughs> I want to show you something funny. Watch this. Charlie, come out here. Charlie. Charlie, watch this. This kills me. Charlie, put on these white panties and dance like a monkey. <laughs> Charlie Hodge, ladies and gentlemen, give him a hand. Charlie Hodge. Scarves, water, white panties, dancing like a monkey. Charlie Hodge, that's my boy. Any a great man? Charlie Hodge. Great burly, hairy man. Charlie Hodge. Looks good in them white panties, don't you? Been on the road a few months, that Charlie Hodge. You can, he's not back there, sir. Get back here. This is all a figment of my imagination. Get back here. This is a figment of Dr. Nick's imagination right now. Charlie's saved my life several times, too. Uh, I did take too many of Dr. Nick's vitamins, and I'd wake up on the bathroom floor on my back like a doodly bug. And Charlie, uh, fearing that I'd go into a coma, would straddle me wearing them white panties. And if that weren't exciting enough, he'd rub two popsicles on my temple to keep my pulse break going. Charlie Hodge, ladies and gentlemen. Scarves, water, white panties, popsicles on the temple, dancing like a monkey. <laughs> For that, I give him a trailer out back at Graceland to raise his 15 waterhead hillbilly rude cracker spawn that he's had with every two-tooth fucking waitress in every goddamn Waffle House in Kentucky County. Just for bringing me my scars and my water. Charlie Hodge gets a whole life paid for, ladies and gentlemen, because he's the one when my brow is sweaty and my throat's parched. will run out there like a little monkey boy with a popsicle stick sticking out of his buttock, his white panties pulled against his hairy stomach. Dancing like a monkey, bringing in some scars and water, just to keep keep me interested in living, you know? Keep little Lee excited one more night. I've had it all. I've had mothers, I've had daughters, I've had mothers and daughters eating each other, and I loved it, but man, it's not enough anymore. And the only thing that gets little Lee going anymore is Charlie Hodge in a pair of white pants with a popsicle stick up his butt, two rubbing against my tipple, straddling my chest, my big old lard in case fucking chest. Charlie Hodge, ladies and gentlemen, my man, Charlie Hodge, scarves and water. After that, I've given him a 500 Cadillacs and one for each of his little cracker spawn. He's had with every buck tooth inbred, fucking one-eyed hillbilly waitress bitches in every waffle house I hop that our bus stops at in our never-ending tour across this great land, Mr. Charlie Hodge. He's a beautiful man. Scars and water, Charlie Hodge. Uh, 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 have a blue Christmas uh, without you. Uh, 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 have a blue Take that home, would you? Christmas without you. Celebrate. Take that home with you, honey. Christmas. See what happens without Charlie Hodge, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta wipe my sweaty brow on every object in sight. The overhead is amazing. In bar stools and mic stands alone, we can lose money on the tour. That's why I pay extra for a man, a brain, a brain encased in lard and fucking hairy and southern belly. Swirled around a pair of virginal white cotton panties, pulled up tight around his own little Charlie. Charlie Hodge, 
Hodge, ladies and gentlemen. Scars and water. Give it up for him. Charlie Hodge. And come on out and take a bow, Charlie. We'll see you later in the back bunk on the bus, Charlie. I'm liking the way your titties jiggle when you run them scars out to me, boy. We ain't stopping at no Waffle House tonight, boy. We ain't picking up no book tooth peroxide blonde waffle fucking waitress tonight, Charlie. You gonna tell me about the moment that light bulb went off in your head when you said, God damn it, I can carry water and a scarf at the same fucking time. I can do both those things. I'm Charlie Hodge, and there's nothing I cannot do. Tell me, quit telling me, Charlie Hodge. Well, could you go back to the goat boy thing? Suddenly, that looks like the complete realm of sanity and reason to us. <laughs> Folks, you've been great. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Good night. There's a brand new Cadillac outside for each and every one of you. Please. Thank you. Just see Charlie Hodge in the last stall in the men's room. He's the one with the white top original panties around his left ankle. Thank you. Good night.